Hi everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. Now today we are here to talk about straps and webbing. So recently we did a mystery cal, which is not a mystery anymore. So the patchwork picnic blanket in a bag means that we actually made a bag attached to our blanket and to make it a bag and to be able to carry it we used a piece of webbing this is the webbing that i included in the pack so you can make the picnic blanket in a bag now i have to admit i have a thing for webbing <laughs> Now, what don't I have a thing for, right? Um, so, years ago, I bought a handbag and it had this type of strap on it. And I really loved that. I mean, it's sturdy, it's strong, it's so easy to carry around with you. So, when I started making my own bags, as you know, I like bags and I like making them. I discovered that actually you could buy this, you could buy this actual thing, you know, the webbing, this is what it's called. Um, and of course, you know, you can use it then in your own projects. So I started buying it and of course I started, let me put this away, I started using it for my bags. This is a bag that I made and I started using this for fabric bags. So I would, you know, um, sew it into the bag you know and that would make a nice finish and would give it good handles easy to make easy to use and then of course let me just reach behind me here Do, I don't know whether you remember but I've also made this granny um, square bag with lining and of course yes with the webbing strap so i love this webbing i love using it um it's so convenient it's not expensive at all and yes you can find it in local haberdasheries so today i am here to give you tips on where to get this webbing from if you want to make this picnic blanket again with the bag or of course if you want to make a bag and you want to put handles on it so there are various ways so of course yes i got webbing of course i got it from my wholesaler to put in with your yarn but you can buy webbing um various thicknesses various qualities from haberdasheries um, i'm sure you can find it online as well look there's different structures to it so this one is a little bit more coarse this one is about the more yeah more like the same of this and this one is woven a little bit finer so you have to watch out because there are different widths and there are different qualities so this one is um there is some, it's not cotton, so this is a, a blend and that makes it strong. This one here is cotton and this is very thin and it's woven differently. So there, there is quite a difference between these two. This one is the webbing that you use for a bag. This one would be more used as piping, you know, for on an edge. If you start using this as a bag handle, it will work, but after a while, do you see what do you see what's happening it will start curling up and it won't be so nice anymore for you to carry it this one is just going to stay the same look yeah so there is a difference in quality obviously this one is much wider again so watch out if you're buying it you know the width so the one that we're using is about three centimeters wide or 30 millimeters um so yeah so there's different uh qualities so go and have a look and obviously they've got them in all the colors of the rainbow but look these here came with look a dressing gown that i bought now, this obviously is not as thick as our webbing. It's a bit wider and it's thinner. But do you know what? It could do the job, you know. Um, obviously, I've got two shorter pieces here. I haven't undone it. I'm keeping it. It's a lovely colour. So, you know, maybe in a future project, this might come in handy. So that's why I'm keeping it. Same with this one here. I love the accent stitching. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that one was from my um, white dressing gown. So once again, you know, it's worth keeping things like this. This is a beautiful ribbon to use somewhere. But as this is not thick enough, if I was to make something in grey and I would crochet, like I'm going to show you in a moment, a grey strap and put this against it, look how lovely that would be. So that would mean it would be a thicker strap, thicker webbing, but it would have the sturdiness, it wouldn't stretch because of course the reason why we're using these is because if you make your own crocheted strap and of course I did this when I started crocheting I was like oh, hang on a minute let's make the strap in crochet because of course then you don't have to go out you don't have to get extra materials you can just make it from crochet but unfortunately I soon found out that, <laughs> that the strap that you made in crochet does stretch and when I picked up my bag the bag stayed on the floor and the strap just stretched to my shoulders so yes I mean I quickly found out that a crocheted strap would not work but of course I wouldn't be me if I sorted that. So here I have made a crocheted strap and it does not stretch. Look, I am pulling it. There is no give. And I will show you in a moment how to make that. And of course, also you can, if you wanted to, make your strap in a material. If you have some material, uh, the colours that complement any project that you're making and you need a strap you can make it yourself from material and of course that doesn't stretch either so yes there are alternatives uh, for this strap that we are using in the picnic blanket so do go and have a look at a local shop at a local haberdasheries maybe you will find it there if you can't find it or if you want to make your own, you might find some nice ribbons from something that you bought. Or you might have some material, but also you can make your own. Okay, so let's show you how to make your own. And then after that, I am also going to show you how I made this. Of course, these are just samples. You will have to make them to the length that you require. Fluff. <laughs> okay, let's get started. So the type of webbing that we used for the cowl uh, has a width of one and a quarter inches or three centimeters. So what do you need to make your own crocheted strap for your bag? So here I have my yarn. I am using Starcraft Special DK in the color Meadow, but of course, if you're making this in any other colors, you can use whatever you need. Then, of course, this yarn is prescribed for a four hook. I am using my usual three and a half. Uh, use the hook that you usually use for your yarn. Then a measuring tape just to measure how wide and how long, of course, you're going to make your strap. Uh, a darning needle to sew in the ends. Scissors, of course, to cut the yarn. And then also we are going to do a couple of things to reinforce your strap. And we are going to put some fabric behind the strap. And so you will need fabric just wider and just longer than you are going to make your strap. And then you will need sewing needle and sewing thread in a matching or contrasting color. So let's make our own crochet strap. So to get started we are going to make a slip knot, insert your hook and we are going to chain six. One, two, three, four, Five and six. Now six chains, let me just show you, will be just about yeah, a one and a quarter inch or yeah, three centimeters. So that should be fine for the width of the webbing. So now we're going to do one chain as our turning chain. 
And then in the sixth chain, we are going to start doing double crochets. So you yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Then you are going to do a double crochet in every stitch along your chain. And of course, that's six of them. Now I am using double crochets. This will make your work grow quite quickly, but they are also known to stretch more. We are going to do some reinforcement measurements, so it should be fine. If you want to, you can, of course, use single crochets or half double crochets. So here I have my six double crochets and then here on the side I have my little turning chain. The turning chain doesn't count. So now I'm going to chain one, turn my work and I am going to once again start doing double crochets and I am going to use the V's on top of the work. So straight away in here I am going to place my double crochet, picking up the V there. And of course each row you're going to have to do six. Now there were five V's facing us quite clearly just now. And those are the five, one, two, three, four, five, that I've just done now, but you know you have to do six. So that sixth one is right there, right here. Okay, so make sure you do not miss it and that you do it. And you just have to go and find it sort of tilting your work towards you like this. And this is also going to be a good exercise to keep your stitches, to learn how to keep your stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then here we have that turning chain. Now, turning chain, turn, and we get started doing our double crochets again. I mean, you could even do a fancy strap and do a double crochet row, then a half double crochet row, then a single crochet row. You know, it's all up to you. Feel free to, you know, adjust to whatever you uh, fancy doing to, in a way, to help you get this length of, you know, of work done. You're doing six stitches, you're constantly turning and you're doing quite a few rows. Okay, so this is what you are going to keep repeating. Chain one, turn and then your six double crochets. Now for the bag I used a strap of webbing that was about a meter sixty long. So maybe measure with your tape measure how long yours should be and see how long you have to make yours. So I will see you when you have your strap the length that you need. Okay, so I've made a length of strap. Obviously, it's not a meter fifty, but I'm doing this for um, you know demonstration purposes, and also I want to be able to show you lots of things, so it's easier if it's smaller. So I've decided this is my last row, and what I have also decided is to do the um, what I'm going to do now in a contrasting color, so you can see quite clearly what I am doing or what. I want you to do. So I'm just going to change color and I'm going to do it the same way as we usually do on the last pull through. Don't change color if you don't want to, obviously. I'm just doing this for for your, you know, for your convenience so it would be handy for you to see what I'm doing. So now I'm going to chain one. Then I am going to start doing single crochets and I'm going to make a border around the whole strap. So I'm going to go into here, into that stitch here, find a hole and do a single crochet. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do a chain and another one. Now, as you can see, this is extended quite a bit and another single crochet. But if I pull this one and you shouldn't have that problem because obviously normally you should not have cut off your yarn. 
you see I now have made a corner. And now I'm going to place single crochets all along the side of my strap. And by doing that and by keeping it really tight, so I am really pulling my yarn, I'm doing it really tightly, this way it will stretch less. Now let me just demonstrate. So here you can see I'm like this much apart, okay? So this is holding it normally. But look, I can pull it a lot further apart, okay? So that was a big difference. If you are reinforcing this strap and you're going to be doing quite a few things here, then you will soon notice that you won't be able to do that same stretch. So I'm just doing a few more stitches here. And of course, I've only done it on one side now. But look, I'm holding it like this and I'm doing the same movement. Hang on, I can't move it. <laughs> okay, let me try again. Look, I can't, I can't pull it apart. See, there is a lot less pullage <laughs> than here. See the difference? So already this is going to make a big difference. So I'm going to continue like this, putting single crochets at regular intervals quite tightly and I'm doing the corners two, one, two. So two single crochets, one chain and two single crochets. Now that looks a little bit big so maybe try and see how big your single crochets are. You might want to do one single crochet, one chain or one single crochet in the corner. Might want to try that, okay? So I'm going to continue to go round my strap here and I will be back to show you the next step. So yes, when you get to the corner, let me just do one more here and then here, the end stitch I'm going to treat as a corner. I've just been doing one single crochet, one chain and one single crochet and that's plenty to make your corner. Two single crochets is just going to be too bulky. So I have just finished my round and now as you can tell, look, I'm holding it like before and it can stretch but not to the extent that it did without the border reinforcement. Now we are going to do another measure to make sure that this strap is not going to stretch. So I'm going to just cut off my meadow for now. I'm going to go back to my contrasting colour so it's easy for you to see. And I am going to do a slip stitch round into my strap. So just bring up a loop like this and then you're going to do slip stitches along the side like this obviously they're not going to make much difference when you are you know pulling it that way but we have to get started somewhere and now i am going to go sideways so i'm just going to turn there we go look now whenever we do slip sti stitches i'm always saying do them loosely do them loosely this time you're going to try and do them quite tightly and you know to the point where the strap just doesn't pucker up <laughs> can you see can you see how that they're quite tight so these ones are looser can you see the difference so now with doing this and i am just finding openings to go in holes or openings to go into i am really trying to make sure i do this very tightly i mean you know not not as tight so that it see and now look, I'm doing it already with this one. I should be, I should have done it there as well, but we'll we'll do the test. Look, I can't pull it apart. So these slip stitches will stop your strap from stretching. So now I'm going to work my way all the way around the strap in meadow, just like I did earlier with the single crochets. I am now going to do 
this same method of putting the slip stitches in and of course if you're using the same color yarn it's not going to be so obvious if you have to go a little bit off your straight line here to find a location for your hook to go into and i am nearly at the end of doing my slip stitch round around my webbing here around my strap and so the last slip stitch there so we're going to put this on a needle and I'm going to go under this one here and back into the last loop there. There we go. Okay. So this is what my strap looks like at the moment. So we've got our single crochet border and our slip stitch round to reinforce it. So now as a last measure, I am going to take a piece of fabric, it's about the same colour, and I am going to sew that at the back of my strap. I will be folding in the edges like this. I'll pin it into place and then I will sew it by hand. You can also sew it on by machine. And this will ensure that the strap obviously doesn't stretch but also that there are no gaps visible either so to make your fabric strap you will need some fabric now you will need fabric the length of your strap with some seam allowance and double the width of your strap with some seam allowance because we're going to fold the fabric double and then you are going to use either hand sewing so you've got your needle and your sewing thread or you're going to use your sewing machine which is what i'm going to do and of course you'll need some pins to you know pin it all together before you actually sew it so i've just got an example here yours would have to be much longer if you were to make a strap of one meter sixty okay but i'm just wanting to show you here so you need quite a wide piece of material because what you're going to do is fold in the edges on both sides like so best to pin it as well but once you've got them folded in you are then going to fold the whole strap double and this will ensure that you've got your rough edges inside your material inside your strap and that you have a nice edge here like so so you would have to do this all along your material so i am just going to there we go see look you fold it all in nicely and you pin it There we go. And then, of course, you are going to be sewing up your strap, either by hand or by machine. And what I generally do is I, of course, sew the top edge where you've put your two pieces of fabric together, the side. But I also sew along the edge here so you can't tell where it is that you've sewn the fabric together. And that way you can make your own strap. Of course, you are going to have to make sure that it's the width that you need. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful for making your own webbing. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.